Okay, um, asymmetric encryption. We've uh, well, we've gone through all the symmetric encryption. We've got um, a system in in symmetric encryption where the same key is used to encrypt and to decrypt. Um, uh, so you use a single key. Um, that uh, key needs to be shared between the two parties to the communication. And uh, the, uh, the key needs to be kept secret. And as uh, noted, we've you know, got various things that we need to do in terms of managing the keys, making sure uh, that they are kept secret, that they are protected, that they are recoverable. Um, if uh, you know it is important, if if uh, you know somebody loses the key, uh, do we have access to the information, et cetera, et cetera? We've got the the limitations on it too, the restrictions on how far we can go with regard to. Uh, say integrity, authentication, um, uh, that sort of thing. Now, um, it's good and strong, uh, and and we know how strong uh, in in most parts, as long as we are using um, public algorithms that everybody knows about, that everybody has a chance to test and and poke and prod and find out you know where the weaknesses are and and the the weaknesses in the crypto systems do tend to be in the implementation well that's mm, the same for pretty much everything even asymmetric encryption uh, so when we get the asymmetric cryptography it is um, sometimes known as public key encryption now um, that Yes, there is a public key. Um, there are two keys. Uh, one is public and one is private. And um, they are mathematically related. Okay, I said I wasn't going to get into math. Um, I lied. Uh, well, not really. We're going to do a, a, a little bit. And so, therefore, we've got some worksheets for you. Do you want addition or subtraction? And... Uh, uh, those of you who are watching online will notice that I'm not handing out worksheets and there is no way for you to get worksheets and so on and so forth. But uh, just, you know, which would you choose? And you would probably choose addition because um, it is easier to add than subtract. Okay, let's, uh, maybe you don't believe me on that one. Would you like to do uh, multiplication or division? And I think at that point, yes, you would all rather do multiplication than division. Would you rather do squares or square roots? And I think here it's pretty clear what I'm getting at. There are certain operations in mathematics which are inverses of each other. Uh, subtraction is the inverse of addition. Division is the inverse of multiplication. Uh, uh, square roots is the inverse of squares. So. Um, when we are doing those, they are mathematically related to each other, and but they are easier to do in one direction, and and that's you know only the beginning of of what we can do in in this regard, and this is why um, uh, there is the sometimes confusing use of one way encryption as i said with hash that's one type of one way encryption um the when we get into asymmetric encryption um we talk about a one way function that is that it's much easier to do one way than it is to do the other way and if we have such a function and there are a, a number um uh Okay, uh, exponentiation, seeing as how that was Diffie-Hellman. Um, it's, uh, it's not too hard to do, you know, raise a, a base to an exponent. Um, but given a number and a, you know, it's, it's harder to find the 
uh, the base or the exponent um, to make that number. Uh, to take the logarithm, um, it is, uh, yeah, where's, um, factoring, yes. Um, it is easy to take two prime numbers and multiply them with each other and get a large result. Given a large number, it is more difficult to find the prime factors of that large number. So, um, this is what's happening in asymmetric encryption. Um, one, one more, um, uh, the knapsack problem. Given a bag of weights, um, if you know the uh, the different weights in the bag, it's easy to find the total weight of the bag. Given a bag of total weight, it's very hard to figure out what the weights are that are in the bag. Uh, so, again, you know, uh, things that are not impossible, but difficult to do one way and, and a lot easier to do another way. And that is what asymmetric encryption is based on. And uh, we, we will go through, um, uh, yeah, I think we'll go through Diffie-Hellman, um, if I remember correctly, uh, in a little bit here, uh, so that you uh, get an example of how this actually does work uh, with very small numbers. And um, that's the, the thing, you know, when we do these on a, a small scale, it may seem fairly easy, but when we do it on a larger scale, then it becomes a lot harder um, to uh, do the, uh, the inverse functions, the, the difficult functions. So, um, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, uh, the general aspects of asymmetric encryption um, and then we'll be, yeah, we'll go into some of the details of it.